Warning, this video may contain foul language and mech on mech mayhem. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to Mech Warrior Online. This is Fuzzy Nova, and today we've got the Catapult Butterbee. Oh yeah, Catapult Classic Inner Sphere Heavy Mech. It's been one of my uh, it's in, it's in my top ten list of favorite heavy Inner Sphere mechs. It's very pleasingly aesthetic. It's a nice design, classic design. It's had some changes over the few years. I think they made it smaller, a little bit more squattier. Very popular mech. Um, very popular LRM boats, SRM boats, street boats, whatever. But we're going to be doing something that I've never done on a catapult before. And why not? Since we're showcasing the Butterbee, we're going to really focus on some really heavy medium range missiles. That's the deal. Um, it's, it's a good heavy mech. It's a good hero. It is. And uh, it was popular when it came out. It's kind of died down since, but you see him every now and then. The design of the catapult has always just been something that I've admired. It really is, uh, it looks good. It does. It, uh, it's, every time I see a catapult, I just have a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. They're good looking mechs. And, uh, of course, if you like your Lerming and your LRMs, then go ahead and snag one up. They're relatively cheap. They're about 5 million C bills. Um, I'm scrolling with my laptop built-in mouse that's why it's kind of funny looking but anyways um let's take a look at what we got this is gonna be a shorter video than normal I'm trying just to run through this it's, it's been a lot of fun okay so it's 65 ton mech the Butterbee comes with four energy and four missile hard points it's got two in each arm or each missile pod I would say so two missiles in each arm then it's uh, Four energy hard points, two in the CT, and then one in each torso. I am focusing heavily on the MRMs, going with the biggest MRMs we can put in there with two MRM 40s. So yeah, these do 40 points of damage a piece. They uh, they're hot weapons though. But the range on MRMs is pretty damn good. I got it going about 577 meters, so not too bad. We're just gonna back it up with three medium lasers since they are only a ton of piece, but our main weapons are definitely going to be those MRM 40s, the heavy ones. I'm working with ferro fibrous, double heat sinks, and endo steel. Um, so I have no structure st slots left. I am maxed out on my armor except for the legs. I uh, got the upper half all maxed out. Yeah, really no room for nothing else. I got three tons of MRM ammo. It's about enough. It's a good amount of ammo. You want at least three tons if you're using two MRM 40s. Two tons, you'll run out pretty quick. Three tons usually lasts me the match. Just depends. But they are hot weapons, so our heat management is going to be on the lower side. 1.17 out of 2, so watch that heat. But the thing is, is that this thing can dish out some good damage quick. And um, it's a pretty good build. Dual MRM 40. Catapult Butterbee. Skills. I do have a lot of skills. Most of these skills went towards um, when I was using the LRMs. It's a lot of target info gathering skills, radar depth, all that stuff. So I do have quite a few skills. We're really not going to talk about it. It's all that target decay duration, retention range, sensor range, uh, missile velocity, all that stuff. Cooldown. We've got a lot of it. Um, but with MRMs, it really, really doesn't matter. We're just going to be firing these babies right into the CTs of the enemy. But yeah, the Butterbee. It's a uh, quick showcase video. Quick showcase. It's a good looking mech. I love the catapult. It uh, No jump jets on this either. I took those off. But it, it does come with jump jets. And uh, another good build, if you're not feeling the MRMs, is the SRMs. But four SRMs, six with Artemis, and some pulse lasers, and you got a monster. Really, that's it. Butterbee. I, I'm calling this one the jungle mech. I don't know. I could see it in a jungle. You know what I mean? It's a jungle mech. Anyways, let's get into a match. I'll see you guys on the battlefield. Today's subject is the catapult. The catapult is an offense-oriented, second-line fire support battle mech initially produced from 2561 to 2563 on a limited contract for the Terran hegemony. 
representing Hollis Incorporated's first foray into the mech market. The catapult was produced in record numbers over its initial three-year period from the company's brand new, state-of-the-art factory. However, when the contract came up for review in 2563, the hegemony decided not to renew it, while the catapult had performed adequately at its role, it was not quite what they wanted. With large numbers of the mechs still in the field, the catapult would continue to see use in the Star League Defense Force with second line and specialist formations such as mountaineering regiments. When the factory constructing them switched over to the more successful Battle Master, Hollis limited production of spare parts couldn't keep the design's numbers from dwindling. When the Star League fell, many of the remaining catapults joined Dele Khan Kierensky on his exodus. The Kapellan Confederation collected most of the catapults that remained in the inner sphere, and the Hollis factory on Cori briefly produced new models and spare parts. At the same time, the Draconese Combine managed to seize a sizable force in their capture of Deiran. The renewed production ended when the Cori factory was destroyed at the onset of the First Succession War, ensuring the rarity of the catapult during the rest of that bloody era. Entire invasions were commenced simply to seize the remaining number of these mechs, particularly those launched by the Federated Sons against the Confederation. Many variants of this venerable design were produced through its lifetime, and the catapult's rarity began to reverse in 3033 when Yori Mech Works was contracted by the DCMS to restart production of the CPL TK2 on Alnir. The greatest change to the chassis came later, with the introduction of the CPL TC3, which swapped out the original's LRMs for much larger and more powerful artillery missiles. These models were put to excellent use, especially when paired with Ravens, and paved the way for new design advancements. In the years prior to and after the clan invasion, the Confederacy and Combine retained the largest number of existing catapults, though many periphery realms would field some of the centuries-old models, and more variants would be produced for decades. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems now. The Butterbee. A complete monster. No, it's a great mech. It really is. Um, but I've always liked catapults. Some pilots don't like them, but I, I've always liked the catapults. Um, so yeah, but if you're not a big fan of MRMs, and honestly, I've I say this a lot, I don't use MRMs a lot, so I'm getting more accustomed to them. But MRMs, they're good weapons, and MRM40s are just lethal. They are great weapons to have. You you really feel like you're doing some some real damage to the enemy. Um, destroying those components and uh, I mean if you've got dual MRM 40s this little guy can go up against an assault well he's not that little but you know what I mean compared to uh, you know a giant assault the catapult looks kinda small but um yeah but it is hot you really can't get past that um but it's okay all in due time make our way towards the middle here three medium lasers it's just really there for that extra little push the two MRM 40s is what's going to carry us and the range on MRMs is great we've talked about this before M MRMs are just they're good weapons um, now remember the bay doors on your catapult need to be open earlier I was playing and I kept wondering why there was like a second and a half delay between um, me firing my missile hard points and it's because you need to have your bay door open so um, and I didn't notice this in catapults before um, but if you uh, if you unlock your missile bay doors there's a little light inside your cockpit that um, turns on to let you know that they're open or if they're closed if they're closed the lights are red if they're open the lights turn white so there is that look at this look at this uh, oh my god Dire Wolf is going down. We just put a hurting on him. Literally 80 points of damage right into his CT there. He's not got much left, but we are also taking a pound and we lost one of our MRMs already. That's the thing with the catapult. 
your missile um, hard points will be targeted because it's just a it's a big easy thing to hit. Giant blocks on your shoulders are gonna be targeted. That's gonna happen. And I lost some of my medium laser. I still have an MRM40 left, but I lost another of my, one of my medium lasers. We still got two left. Components on the catapult fall off uh, very very easily. Um, I did try to uh, up the armor in the upper part of the mech. I maxed it out. Left the legs a little bit undone. Usually I don't get legged in the catapult. Doesn't happen. Here comes a Nova. We're going to try to strike him if I can get around this. Yep, here we go. There we go. Alright, let's jump down here. Try to get some cover. There's only one left, but those last little lights always like to get up behind you and, and peg you. Especially me. It always happens to me. I think I'm good and safe. And then next thing you know, you are being shot from behind. But catapults, yeah. The butter bees, you can do a lot with it, missile-wise. And energy-wise, too. Honestly, there was I was going to do an energy build, which was three large pulse lasers, and then four sets of SRM-2, which actually works really well. Um, but I think the K-2 is really kind of, you know, the or the Jester. The Jester is more of the energy um, catapult there, so I wanted to do something different, and the MRM-40s is really something different, something I don't do, actually, I don't think I've ever done, I really don't, so, um, so pretty good match, we, uh, annihilated the team, we did a good amount of damage, um, we're gonna try to pick it up, maybe get some more, uh, f really focus in on the enemy here, if we can get a decent match out of this, but let's go ahead and play another, try to get some more damage in here. I'll tell you what, I really do love Canyon Network. You will see it a lot in my videos. You'll see a lot of HPG, you'll see a lot of Canyon Networks, Grimplexes, you'll see Frozen City and Polar Highlands. Some of my favorite maps. I know Polar Highlands, I do like that map, I do. But Canyon Network is definitely one of the maps that I love the most, so you're going to see that a lot. Um, but yeah, make, make sure to open your missile bay doors. Keep those open, otherwise you're going to have that delay. With LRMs, it's okay, but when you're using short-range to medium-range missiles, it, it gets annoying. You don't want that second delay there. All right, so um, let's go ahead and head here. We got Domination. So we're going to be up and close and personal with these guys, and we've got some MRMs for them to eat, basically. Let's shove it right in their face. Get, get down to the nitty gritty. I like this build, I do, I like it. Dual MRM 40s, um, ER mediums would be a, a nice upgrade maybe, uh, but a little bit of lag there. But yeah, I, I'm fine with the mediums right now. I really don't even care. Um, but my build is very uh, slam packed. I have no more room for anything. Um, you could drop your <coughs> MRM 40s down to 30s or even 20s, but the the damage wouldn't really be there. Um, you could load up on maybe upgrading your energy weapons, which wouldn't be bad. Um, I'm not really feeling pulse lasers with MRMs. I, I don't know. I just don't feel feel that. Like an airstrike right there. But there's a lot of builds with this thing. I'm just finding the right one is kind of difficult because there's just so many. There really isn't a right one. There's a lot. Uh, look at this catapult get back down there. Oh, I am taking some hits. You gotta be very careful because the armor on the um, torsos is kind of thin. Or the, the arms, I should say. The arms. The missile doors. It's kind of it's kind of thin, so uh, they do pop off quite easily and they will be targeted first. You're gonna lose your missiles first, if anything. I'm trying to play it safe here. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and, yep. Like that mauler over there. And I am taking the sun spider, get back. I'm gonna try to go back down here. I do not want to be down in this alley, but right now it might be the best place. Ah, shit. Alright, come on. Come on, boys. Light this guy up here. CT 
key is open there. I'm surprised he just he just survived that. That was a good shot. We just use our cool shot to cool down. We're gonna go after go after this uh, assault there. He is down. Alright. There's a mad dog out there. Nope. Catapults back for some more. There are airstrikes just galore today. And my right arm is hurt very badly. And so my CT is now... I just took a... Uh, sometimes those airstrikes can really hurt you. Um, especially if you're already damaged. It can do a lot. There is a timber wolf sitting up on this ledge. And I cannot reach him. He's up there on top of that, that boulder there. I'm hoping he can drop down so I can attack him. But I really need to be careful of my uh, right shoulder. Um, there he goes. Alright. Pack him in the back. Shoot one more salvo at him. I need to back the hell up. Oh, yep. There goes one of my MRMs and mediums. So my left, my left arm seems to go first. Um, that's always targeted my left side. All right, we're gonna keep going in. I'm gonna keep fighting until I'm done. And that's it. I was destroyed. Oh, we did do quite a bit more damage though. Uh, trying to hit a piranha with LBX auto cannon. Actually, it's easier to hit him with LBX. I think that's probably the easiest ballistic to hit them with is an LBX auto cannon. And there you go. LBX. Great weapons to use against lights, honestly. Shorter video this time. But uh, I wanted to showcase the Butterbee. It's a good Mac. Dual MRM 40s. It's probably a good way to go. It's a fun way to go. Anyways, guys, we will see you next time. I'm out of here.